All right, students, let me see if I can break this down into a little bit different perspective using a 3D program here. We're talking about geology and continental drift and terrain features and contour and relief. Let me see if I can explain it a little bit better. Here you go. That's the Earth, right? It's round. And it only looks round from space, right? If you look at it closer, if we zoom in closer, then really what we get is a bunch of lines. And those lines, you can see right here, form, let's just say, individual plates. And those plates, if we take one of those plates and we extract it out, then what we get is, at least initially, you would think, we get a flat area. But in reality, we don't get a flat area at all. So if I extract one of those plates out, let's just say pull one of those plates out, it's going to initially look like a flat plane, right? It'll look like this. Now, that doesn't look like much, but... And obviously, the world is not flat. So if I take that plane, which came from one of those segments out of the globe, and I started adding terrain features to it, or relief, which is the vertical and horizontal dimensions of the land, then you're going to get the slopes, and you're going to get the mountains and the valleys and, and that kind of thing. So if I take this section of it, let's just say here in a corner and that corner becomes oh I don't know some kind of mountain we'll raise it up and maybe in this area we'll push it down and maybe over in here if we've got a couple of holes they're real hard to see at this point but you've got what is the beginnings of a topographic map but only it's 3d so if we take all of those vertices away and we look at it from the perspective of this you can start to see little features you know how it slopes how steep it is and on a flat piece of paper it typing paper for instance you can't do this so all you can do is draw lines those lines are called contour lines so if I was to want to make a contour map then what I would have to do is on the top view here let's just use that same analogy we'll go ahead and create lines but they're really similar to just throwing a stone in the water and you have those concentric or that ripple effect that goes around it, right? So the closer that the lines are, so let me draw some lines here. And these are lines that you would find on a topographic map. So that could be the top of a, a hill or top of a mountain or something. If they want to radiate outwards, and let's make these real close. And since we're dealing with Mother Nature, they're not going to be perfect. And then let's make this area out here quite a bit wider. And let's do one more and make this backside the lines real close. These are contour lines right here. And then we'll come around here, come around here, and then end right there. Now, if you look at these contour lines, they represent the elevation. The closer they are, the steeper the segments, or the steeper, this is like a cliff right here. It's almost a straight drop. However, when these relief lines or these contour lines are further apart, like right here and right here, that's 
a gentle slope, that'd be something that you could probably hike up. This one right here, you'd have to um, do some mountain climbing. And this one right here is kind of in between. So let me show you another, another way that that looks. If we look down here, and similar to this right here, we take that same line, and I'm just going to draw an irregular shape because, again, the world is not perfectly shaped. And let's say with that line, I want it to have a contour to it or I want it to be shaped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify it or change it. Now, the way it is right now, let me undo it. Let's say that's those are two contour lines. It could be the contour lines that we drew up here, right? And you see how close they are together. They're pretty steep down here. So you can see when you do that, when they're close together, you get a really steep hill. Now, if I take that a little bit more, and I can move it up. Now that's really steep, or I can take it up more, or down, and you can see how steep that is, you know, on all the sides right there, which represent that the contour lines, and you can kind of see them through the color differences, are pretty close together. So that indicates a very steep hill or mountain, but if they were further apart, then it would be a more gentle or more gradual kind of thing. Now, the theory of continental drift basically means that if we take this right here, if we take one of these and let's say we have one to start with and we're going to move it, So we kind of create two. Let's move it this way. And that's where we start. But as the continental drift theory proposes, as these continents start moving away due to currents and other forces, um, above and below ground, at atmospheric forces and forces under the ground, see they move apart. There are shells and there are fossils on this side that are exactly identical to the shells and fossils that are here. And if we push them back together, the edges line up exactly perfectly, which is another indicator that they at one time used to be together, kind of fitting like the pieces of puzzle wood. So that's how we know that over a long period of time that the continents drifted apart, drifted apart, drifted apart. And eventually they took on their own terrain or lay of the land or their own topology. So remember, a contour map is nothing more than just a bunch of circles. And the closer that they are together, the steeper that these hills are going to be. The further out that those contour lines are, the more gentle the elevation is going to be. I hope this helped.